I open it up and just rip it down the middle. Trista Selmarsteed cuts a lot of coupons these days. In fact, she's become a bit of a fanatic about it. This is my coupon box container. Um, I carry it with me to the grocery store. Coffee, uh, cake, butter, milk, pasta, sugar. This one here is for household goods and personal items. You never know that coupons will save you as much money as it it actually has. I've been trying to figure The 38-year-old who lives in a suburb just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, has been saving all these coupons because as of December 28th, she has no income. She was one of 1.3 million Americans who lost their unemployment insurance when an emergency federal unemployment insurance program expired. That same week that I expected to get that next check was the same week that I had a bill that was due, but I wasn't able to pay it. I had to ask my husband to start paying my part of the bills. And that's the sad part, not being able to help my husband pay, pay the bills. Trista, who used to make $30,000 a year working for a medical billing service, was laid off from her job in November of 2012 and hasn't been able to find a job since. I sensed a year out there in this job market has kind of beat you up a little bit, yeah? It's very sad um, that uh, to have the qualifications and not be able to actually work, you know, get a job in your field. And I've been doing this since 2007. Why do you think it's so hard for you to get a job? I'm not sure. Um, a lot of companies are still laying off. Trista has been without her benefits for eight weeks. To make matters worse, her husband, who's a truck driver, was hurt on the job and is now on what's known as light duty, working fewer hours and only taking home about 60% of what he used to, which now equals about $2,000 a month. So that's another whammy, you know, something else that started, um, started the down spiral. Excuse me. They say they now have to dip into their savings just to pay their bills. She says things have gotten so bad that when she's not at her computer for several hours each day looking for work, she and her husband spend their free time watching TV just to lift their spirits. Cartoons and comedy it have us laughing. It takes your mind off of the things that you might be going through. There are some people who would say that people who are on unemployment don't want to look for a job. I just want to live off the unemployment. It's, it's a free, easy paycheck. <laughs> it's not a free, easy paycheck. That's one, for me, it's not. I know what I like in life. I know what I strive to have in the future. And I can say some people might try to use that. But me personally, I, that's not me. While Trista believes that extending her benefits would give her the cushion she needs to get another job, Economics professor Jeff Dorfman, who teaches at the University of Georgia, says that the extended unemployment benefits are the problem. The studies show it raises unemployment more by allowing people to stay unemployed longer, still searching for a really great job instead of taking a job that's available. Dorfman points to North Carolina. Last July, the state legislature cut unemployment benefits from 73 weeks to 19 weeks. In the months since, the state unemployment rate dropped from 8.9% to 6.9%. And you attribute that to cutting 50 weeks of unemployment insurance? When you suddenly get cut off, you realize, you know, I need to take a job. And the people in North Carolina apparently found jobs. Others attribute the decline in unemployment there to unemployed workers giving up their search for work. And they note the drop in unemployment has been coupled with a big increase in the number of people there on food stamps. I get job online alerts. As for Trista, she says she'd be happy to take a job outside her medical billing field. She says she's applied for all kinds of jobs during the past year, everything from driving a school bus or a truck to clerical jobs at CVS and Walmart, even as a flight attendant with Delta. All of them met with rejection. We regret to inform you that you have not been selected for this position at this time. Thank you for applying and best wishes for success in your future endeavors. Delta Talent Acquisition Team. And 
that's I've gotten that three times from Delta. As you know, you hear the uh, the theory that some people are just a couple paychecks away from homelessness. Well, we actually see that. Tracy Mosley is the Transition Program Coordinator for the Urban League of Greater Atlanta, an organization that helps African Americans find and train for jobs. He warns of dire consequences unless unemployment benefits are extended. We actually see people that um, had a sustainable income, they had a good job, good employment, uh, but all of a sudden they find themselves homeless. The problem is particularly acute in the African American community where the unemployment rate is nearly double the national average. Mosley says the interview and job prep classes his organization offers have been filled to capacity with people like Trista Selmar Steed, who he says are desperate for work. She recently met with a job counselor here. So you're, you're being um, recommended for a position with MARTA, with, which is the Transit Authority for Atlanta. Okay, that's our bus um, railway system that we use here. Okay, and so that's one of the opportunities you'll be considered for. So I want to make sure that you're going to be available on March the 3rd. Okay. So I can have you lined up for an interview. Okay, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Yes. This is a big help. Trista is crossing her fingers that this lead might just pan out. But for the time being, just getting to the Urban League's office in Atlanta, a 45-minute drive from her home in the suburbs, is a financial burden now that she doesn't have an unemployment check every week. And so if their source of income, of temporary income, is cut off, a lot of them cannot even afford to come down here for the training. But Professor Jeff Dorfman says that government benefits can't go on forever. Our compassion has never been unlimited in this sense. We always eventually cut people off. We already had some mechanism for deciding at some point, we've got to stop paying for you. And some would argue that we're not there yet. We're not at that point in the recovery where we should start cutting back. We still need to fund for an extended period of time. The longest we've ever kept benefits before is 35 months after the end of a recession. And we're at 55 months now. So we're 20 months, that's over a year and a half longer than we've ever provided these extended benefits for. Dorfman believes that if the government is going to intervene, that money could be better used retraining the unemployed for new jobs. For now, with Congress at an impasse, it looks like Trista and nearly two million others will have to survive without the federal lifeline they've come to count on in these hard times. I mean, it dampens your spirit a little bit, but the only way you can prosper, I've learned, is to keep a high spirit. And so I just look at it as where one door closes, someone will eventually hire me. After a year, you still feel that way? I still feel that way, yes.